Hello, Lions fans, and welcome to another edition of the Lions Den podcast. Adam Williams here alongside our men's lacrosse coaching staff, assistant coach Kyle Radigan and head coach Brendan Storyer. Guys, how are we doing today? Good. How are you doing, Adam? Doing well. Doing well. Uh, so we're kind of here in late summer. Normally, we have kids on campus at this yep. point. They're coming here shortly. Let's talk about the excitement getting your guys back on campus and being able to see them face-to-face at some point here rather than these Zoom calls that you guys have been doing for the last several months. Yeah, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll touch on that. Um, it, we're really excited. You know, it's our uh, going into our third season here, um, second recruiting class, um, you know, that we put together. And, um, you know, Coach Radigan really stepped up and did a good job. Um, really kind of taking the reins and bringing some really good lacrosse players. So we're excited to get on the field, see what they look like, um, you know, in person, and then also on the field. So, Kyle, talking about kind of the the recruiting aspect, let's talk about your recruitment, and let's kind of even go back before that. I've asked every coach thus far, what was it about your respective sport? So for you, lacrosse, what was it about lacrosse that you're like, that's the sport I want to pursue? Uh, well, first thing that comes to mind, you know, is my family. Um, you know, everyone in my family plays across besides my mom. Uh, my dad played in college. My, my brother played in college. My sister played in college. So it was, it's kind of just a natural sport to play with everyone playing it. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's basically why I picked across. You know, family comes. So the connection goes back to Limestone. Yep. If you guys want to talk about – well, Coach Thor, if you want to talk about Kyle as a player and then what led you to bringing him on board once you got this opportunity at Mars Hill – yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it started with um, our athletic director at Limestone, Mike, uh, Coach Mike Serino. Him and uh, Kyle's dad were college teammates, knew each other. Um, so Kyle actually had been a Limestone fan, um, you know, growing up. Uh, he was actually at my last lacrosse game uh, on the sidelines. As, a, as a senior. <laughs> um, and then I got to see Kyle play um, at the, I believe it was the Under Armour all-American tryouts, or there was like a Suffolk yep. NASA uh, event. So I saw Kyle play there and, you know, immediately saw um, a guy who we could bring in and, you know, potentially kind of run our offense from behind and, uh, you know, reached out to him, got him on campus, um, you know, and he was kind of slated to, you know, be a starter for us for, um, you know, three or four years and, uh, you know, because we had some upperclassmen there and, um, he played midfield his first year and then started um, as an attackman for three years and played in three national championship games, won two of them, a uh, couple-time All-American. So. so not a bad resume. No. <laughs> you, you know, not too bad there. But uh, guys, you're here again, kind of the combination yep. followed you to Mars Hill. Let's talk about the chemistry between you two. Like, how do you, how do you feel you guys interact with one another does someone have a strength over the other or kind of is it uh, an equal balance between you guys yeah I think you know his strengths certainly are talking to guys one-on-one you know Um, as a head coach you can't really just focus on one side or the other Um, you know so right now I coach the defense day to day um, and let him you know coach the offense day to day and he's really good at you know, speaking to the players one on one and working with them how to better themselves individually. Um, whereas, you know, I'll try to help on the offensive side, looking at the big picture. You know, because I, you know, obviously played attack and then was an offensive coordinator. You know, for the better part of my career as an assistant. So, um, just helping with that and you know his ability to relate to the players. Um, you know, obviously when I say something, uh, you know, he's heard that. You know, he dealt with that and he can kind of help them. Uh, you know, kind of navigate that so Kyle kind of yeah. piggybacking off of that because you've been around coach Storier for what about seven years now roughly when you took on the assistant role was the communication easier to to accept as a coach or was it easier to accept as a player if that question um, makes any sense I guess. it makes sense um I'd probably say um I guess it makes a little more sense as a coach now um you know I kind of realize where coach's message is coming from a little bit more um, but, but to piggyback of what you were saying, you know, coming in here was, I guess, I don't want to say it was easy, but, you know, it was a, a pretty easy transition. You know, I was used to coaches, I guess, philosophy and then the way he likes to run his team. So You mentioned uh, in a couple answers kind of talking to the guys, and obviously the one big conversation you guys had had was back in March when, yeah. unfortunately, you had to break the news, hey, uh, sorry, guys, season's over. Kind of walk us through that, that moment and kind of that week 
and, and just kind of where you guys were uh, emotionally and just kind of figuring out like, man, what do we, what do we do from here? Yeah, I mean, you, you could kind of see it coming. Um, you know, when the ACC and the Big Ten are canceling basketball, um, Division One basketball tournaments, um, you can kind of, you know, you know where Division Two lacrosse is on the pecking order, um, and it's not uh, nearly that high. Um, and then you see, you know, the NCAA cancels their basketball tournament. So it was an uh, uh, internal dialogue that we had that, you know, this is going to end soon. Um, you know, we obviously didn't share that with the players because we just wanted them to keep working in case a miracle happened. Um, and then, you know, we were, I guess it was maybe a Thursday. Um, we were getting ready to play Coker, which would have been our second, uh, you know, in conference game. And, um, I was on my way home, um, got a call from, you know, coach Baker and he said, it's over, you know, not, not in those few words, but, um, you know, that's basically what the message was. And I came back to campus, you know, coach Ravin and got all the guys back and, uh, you know, certainly had a pretty emotional, uh, meeting for sure. See, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because I remember, I think that Wednesday night we had a women's lacrosse game. Mm -hmm. So I went home and I had already planned on, on working from home on Thursday and Rick had called me and he goes, Hey, don't come in Friday. I said, Oh, that's kind of a. It's kind of a weird call to get. And he's yeah. like, all right, I'll, I'll keep you posted. He calls me Friday. He goes, yeah, just don't come in until I tell you. And I think that was when I was like, yeah, things got real serious <laughs> yeah. real quick. In about 48 hours, yeah. it went from we'll see you Monday to we'll see you someday. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I can only imagine, too, what the players were, were going through. And, and with your roster, you have quite a bit that are obviously – you want to say local kids, but you know uh, American, but also Canadian kids. So they yeah. got to worry about booking flights home exactly pretty pretty quick. Yeah, um, let's talk about kind of the stresses that they may have approached you about. Around yeah, that I time. mean, I mean, they were really um, you know stressed out. You know, it, like like most were. Um, I guess probably the most um, stressed individual was uh, Marius Robinson. Um, he's from England, okay. UK. So. Uh, you know, it was, it was really about, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how to help him navigate this, um, and get him home as quick as possible because we knew, you know, it was, uh, you know, we weren't coming back, you know, and, uh, you know, he could do some things online cause our school did a great job, um, you know, creating the ability for these, you know, students to finish their classes online. So we knew, you know, that the, they would step up and, and help in that regard. So it, it was stressful. You know, parents had a lot of questions. Um, you know, it was all about safety. And, um, I, you know, I didn't have any uh, um, answers for them really at the time, except that, you know, we were going to do what we could to, uh, you know, take care of, you know, their sons. So let's, let's kind of fast forward past the troubling times, I guess. Yep. So let's go back to we're going to get these kids on campus here in a little bit. Um Let's talk about kind of just moving forward. What are your your goals for this year? As you mentioned, entering that third year, uh, I think around this time, right, you've, you've kind of established this is the culture we want. These yeah. are the kids that we're going after, and we're finally kind of making it fully the the story of Radigan era. Yeah. Let's talk about kind of some of the players that you're excited about that are coming on, and, uh -huh. and again, kind of the goals for this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, the goal is, like it is, you know, every year is to just compete. Um uh, we're in a very tough conference. I think last year we were starting to turn the corner on, com uh, on, on competing a little bit more with the teams in our conference, and uh, I wouldn't, uh, you know, been surprised if we came away with a couple W's, uh, you know, at, at some point in that season uh, against our conference. But um, yeah, I mean, we're. I think uh, I think this year we'll be even more suited to do that. Uh, the upperclassmen we have know what we expect, um, and they work really hard to do that. And now it's their job to help. The younger guys, you know, get accustomed to that um, and, and find the right way to do that. I think we uh, had an issue with that last year. Um, our upper class, when we were fully on board, um, they didn't have the best way to articulate their message to what they expected. I think we'll have a better uh, chance of doing that this year. Um, and I think we have a group that um, wants that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so some, you know, some newer guys that we uh, are excited about. Um, you know, we have a, a grad transfer from UMass Lowell, um, Brandon Beeland, who is uh, a, an attackman, um, big guy. You know, Coach Radigan had a previous relationship with him, which really helped um, get him here. Uh, Michael Clares, Joey Bumgart, uh, Braden Hoskin. We have a transfer named Trevor Kennedy. Uh, we, we really have a good group of guys coming in. Those are just kind of the names that pop in my head. 
um, you know, that, that on the offensive side. And then, you know, we have some defensemen coming in, um, you know, Jalen Gaines, who I think can really help us with his athleticism. Um, you know, and then obviously some returners, you know, you have Zach Kerrigan, who um, was starting to really put it together last year and, uh, you know, would have probably been another all-conference pick. Um, and then, uh, you know, some, some other guys, um, you know, Colton Playstead's a really good leader. Um, we hope that he'll be healthy this year. Um, Corbett Kolb, Jordan Flynn, Jackson Corson. Uh, so there, there's a lot of guys, you know. Uh, Frankie Villanueva just improved like crazy at face-offs. Um, and he was pushed by Devin DePaul. So we're excited about this group. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm leaving off a bunch of names. Um, you know, Austin Chris, I mean, that guy was a machine. Um, for us, you know, ground balls, defense, and we're just going to try to get better, you know, uh, mentally get better. You know, the, when we played some of those teams uh, that move the ball really quickly, uh, we struggled a little bit with that um, just because we weren't taking advantage of, you know, the, the mental aspect of the game. And we have to do a better job of that as coaches, um, and they have to, you know, do a better job of applying that. So you mentioned Zach Kerrigan, and yep. like you said, there's a litany of names there. We could probably go for an hour yeah. kind of discussing, but I want to talk about Kerrigan real quick because at the, the time of the, the cancellation, he was leading the sack and goal yeah. scored, which uh, you had seen his numbers improve dramatically. So Coach Radkin and, and Story, if you guys want to kind of hint, what was the difference in his game from his sophomore season to his junior year to enable him to get those opportunities and to more so capitalize on them? Yeah, you can touch on that. Um, first, yeah. I, I think the first thing that comes off, uh, I think Coach Stoyer held him to a, a you know higher standard than he's probably been held to before. Um, he's probably never had, I guess, the pressure of being kind of the leader on the offensive side before. Um, and I guess from day one, you know, Coach Stoyer and myself, you know, tried to push that on him, and he's done an awesome job responding to that. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's basically what I got for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, he, he's Zach's done a really good job of embracing I think the coaching more this year uh, he coach Ragan works with them a lot individually after practice I mean our practices are about an hour and a half an hour and 45 minutes of you know constant movement so after practice you know we leave a you know 15 to half an hour slot for these guys to work individually with coach Radigan on shooting and the mechanics um, and things like that so he really took to that um, and I mean he you know he works really hard in the weight room uh, he's a pretty good student as well and uh, I, I th you know I think he just accepted that you know he was going to be the best player or one of the best, um, you know, and took that upon himself to, to really come into the year last year and ready to roll. Same. And another thing that helps him a little bit, he wants to be good. Um, you know, he, that's something, you know, he's, he's talked to me about a little bit. He's a guy that, that wants to push himself and wants to become better. So, No, and that's uh, excellent to see. And obviously if where he left off junior year carries over to senior year, again, that kind of enthusiasm, that excitement around this yeah. program yeah. builds a, uh, a lot more. Uh, as we wrap up here, we talk about culture and the players that you want to bring on the field, but culture isn't just on the field. It's yeah. kind of your surroundings. Correct. So you guys have been doing a lot of work uh, within your office, within yep. the, we call it the lacrosse hallway, your locker room. Uh, one great project that you guys unveiled uh, this summer was that video on your Instagram yeah. page where it highlighted essentially the brand new turf, the yep. lights, also the, the renovations to the locker room, and just kind of a, a great hype video for the lacrosse program. Let's talk about kind of how that came into fruition and, again, the importance of creating that hype and that buzz around this program. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is creating the buzz. Um, and, you know, Coach Radigan, you know, talked a lot about this summer because we can't go recruiting. We can't go see these kids. Um, so we need to do, you know, we talked about uh, getting guys to come here, you know, more. Um, and uh, so he worked with Tucker Sherrill, who's a former, uh, you know, he's an alum, Mars Hill alum, um, goalie here. And, uh, you know, they kind of got this going and, and put it together to kind of show everybody what we have. You know, uh, we have a lot of new things that are going on here, uh, special things that we're trying to highlight, you know, because we want it's such a beautiful area. It's such a great u university. So many good people here that we're trying to, uh, you know, show people how special of a place Marshall University is. Guys, again, uh, in the middle of construction here. We're, we're in the middle of the office here. <laughs> yeah. I see some paint. I see uh, walls are being redone. It's yeah. uh, quite a bit of work. I, I appreciate you guys taking the yeah, time and, and doing this. And, uh, again, certainly looking forward to this upcoming season. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Adam.